The early Baroque in Italy was dominated by the gradual shift towards the composition of keyboard music, the beginnings of which can be at least in part traced back to France in the 16th century. Both the French and Italian schools grew in parallel to one another, ever influencing each other through exports and composers who brought with them the current inventions of their native country and immersed it in the new country. The Catholic Church was instrumental in spreading this music across the Alps, as pieces written for churches in one place could be used virtually anywhere in Europe, being as the liturgical use of Latin and the codified ritual of the Mass were such that they were the same everywhere. This is exemplified by Jean Mouton, who was renowned during his lifetime as being a composer of particularly fine motets. His vocal works show traces of proto gabrielli polychoral writing. This was brought over the Alps to Italy by Mouton's student, Adrian Villert, who brought much of these innovative techniques to the Venetian school. The shift to keyboard music became widespread by the time of Utsaski, who was a direct pedagogical descendant of Jean Mouton through the line of Villert at the turn of the 17th century. Incidentally, he was one of the pioneers of Vincentino's Archicembro, which had extra keys to play intervals as small as quarter tones. Luzzaschi's most prominent student was Irolamo Frascobaldi, whose compositions and celebrated treatise named Fiori Musicali, or Musical Flowers, influenced composers like Froberger, Purcell, and J.S. Bach. Frescobaldi's compositions ranged anywhere from being completely newly composed to being rigidly based on an existing Cantus Firmus as those of his predecessors. His Stoccatus, like the one featured here, includes frequent shifts in texture and meter. Frescobaldi himself called the faster, free-flowing sections passaggi, whereas the slower con contemplative sections were called affetti. These frequent shifts in material reflect the frequent shifts in the motets of Mouton, composed a century before, whereas the English keyboard composers around this time, such as John Bull, preferred a more homogeneous sound world within a single piece. The first page from the first edition of Frescobaldi's second book of Toccatas show Frescobaldi's innovative notation for the time, as he shunned the older white note menstrual notation completely in favor of long beams across the virtuosic runs. It's also worth mentioning the mutant eight line staff, which serves as an economic shorthand for both the left hand and pedal staves.
When composers as well as their musical styles are exported to different countries, they can naturally assume one of two categories of musical immersion. Either one, they can renounce their musical heritage from the old country and assume the artistic philosophies of the new country in order to better assimilate into society and be perceived as a fellow native. This is usually under career or financial pressures. Or number two, they can preserve their musical heritage from the old country and possibly simply integrate elements of the new country into their music, into what is in essence still a product of the composer's native country. We will be considering number one first. In the case of Italian natives, this first category is perfectly embodied by Giovanni Battista Lully, later known as Jean Baptiste Lully, who emigrated to France as a teenager under the patronage of Louis XIV in order to practice speaking Italian with his niece. Eventually, he rose through the ranks as an excellent violinist and reformed the orchestra of the Sun King, Les Vingt Violons du Roi, and laid the foundations of modern string playing technique, such as unified bowings and ornaments. Lully went as far as to acquire French citizenship, which was a rarity of the time. His music contains almost no trace of Italy, as he sought to fully embrace the music which accompanied the ballet music already present at the French court. Lully is often credited as being the father of French opera, having brought the Italian opera tradition dating back to Monteverdi all the way to France, and integrating it with music that still reflected the dance pieces the royals were used to, mixed with expressive declamatory recitatives that were based on the rhythms of the French language. His biggest invention, however, was the French overture, which is characterized by the first section which contains stately dotted rhythms, followed by a second section in a faster contrapuntal style, not unlike the contrast between the passaggi and affetti of the Toccatas of Frescobaldi. The second category a composer in a foreign land may assume 
one who did not renounce their musical heritage, but prized it in the new country, is embodied by Domenico Scarlatti, a prominent keyboard composer of his day, who was born in Naples, which was at the time under Spanish rule. As such, he spent most of his career serving the royals of Iberia. Despite Scarlatti sharing a birth date with both Bach and Handel, who wrote in a very heavy contrapuntal style, Scarlatti was quicker in accepting the changing times and writing in the more modern galant style, which Bach's sons were to write in as well. This galant style was characterized by a newfound harmonic simplicity through the prolongation of a single tone in favor of an emphasis on well-balanced melodic structure and symmetry as opposed to contrapuntal complexity. Scarlatti maintained his Italian roots despite living under Spanish rule his entire life by writing in genres firmly rooted in Italian keyboard tradition like toccatas and sonatas in collections with Italian names such as Esercizi per gravi cimbalo or Esercizi musici. He did, however, include flavors of his Iberian surroundings in his music. Many of his sonatas include traces of guitar strumming gestures and striking distances associated with the style. However, the musical substance of his output is and mostly remained largely informed by his Italian upbringing. His sonatas are frequently structured in A, B, or binary form, where both halves contain similar melodic material, but the first half revolves around tonic harmony and the latter half revolves around dominant harmony. The symmetrical juxtaposition between tonic and dominant tonal centers is the groundwork for the tonic dominant contrast in the expositions of the identically titled sonatas of later composers like Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven. The sonatas featured here, Ks 502, 318, and 317, were chosen as a nod to the Italian concerto, which we will hear later, as their tempo markings are exactly those of the three movements of the Italian concerto, but also to make a fast, slow, fast, quasi sonata cycle structure. Hence, we will hear them side by side without a break. The tonality of the middle sonata, K318, is the most striking. The F sharp major scale in the original tuning would have been fraught with unequal semitones. Hence, the texture was written relatively sparsely. In my performance, I deliberately filled in some of the harmonies at pivotal points, such as cadences, since nowadays we have equal tempered instruments and this is no longer an issue. The first two sonatas, 502 and 318, feature drones and dance gestures, which indicate references to folk music, possibly Italian pastorale pedal points, as Corrali wrote in his Concerti Grossi slow movements, all this is not certain. Nonetheless, they display evident inspiration from the countryside. The last sonata, K517, is in the moto perpetuo style with unrelenting 16th notes. This reflects the pedagogical nature of Scarlatti's writing style, hence the name Esercisi, in order to teach his students how to play with a totally even technique.
jumping ahead to the turn of the 20th century, Ottorino Respighi is widely considered to be the finest orchestrator among the Romantic Italian composers. The idea of orchestration and tone color being treated as musical material in and of themselves were relatively old ideas. Composers as far back as Jean-Philippe Rameau were experimenting with blending sounds for certain effects. But it was the later French composers, namely Claude Debussy and Maurice Ravel, that brought it to the fore as an art in its own right, within the context of what was considered at that time to be a modern impressionistic sound world. As such, Respighi is known to have admired these two composers. As a nod to this inspiration, pieces from Respighi's Rome trilogy, like the Pini di Roma, is often paired with pieces like Debussy's La Main on concert programs. Respighi studied with Rimsky-Korsakov briefly, himself also counted among one of the finest orchestrators of Western music. But he mainly studied at the University of Bologna under Giuseppe Martucci, who is credited for having introduced Italy to Wagner's music dramas. Contemporary accounts describe Respighi as a quick study. Martucci said of him that Respighi is not a student, he is only a master. Respighi's output is dominated by orchestral music. Even his piano works are orchestral in nature. This is due to his use of independent musical layers. Just as an orchestrator might assign different layers to different instruments, and categorize them as foreground, middle ground, and background. This orchestral layering can also be seen in works by Debussy, as in this excerpt from Pagod from Etamp here, where the lowest layers are most sparse and the highest is the melodic line, and the middle layers is a middle ground accompaniment, usually consisting of repeated oscillating figures. This is reflective of an orchestrator assigning parts according to the harmonic series, where large intervals will be assigned to lower instruments and smaller intervals to the higher ones. Any part written for lower instruments usually is written in longer note values, for instance, the tuba, because lower instruments are much less suited to play quickly while maintaining a stable intonation. This is reflected in these layered piano textures where there is a lowest line that is very sparse and sustained.
We cap off this lecture recital with Bach's Italian Concerto. While Bach himself was not an Italian, Bach, like many composers of his time, were aware of the highly nationalized musical styles which existed in Europe. For instance, French music included dotted rhythms and les notes inégales. German music included heavy contrapuntal complexity and rhythmic rigidity. And Italian music, with which Bach was concerned here, dealt with formal symmetry of the ritonello form as well as lyricism. These national musical traits were explicitly explored in works like Les Nations by François Couperin. The third part of Bach's clavier übung, or keyboard practice, was comprised of the Italian concerto and the French overture. Both are based on these underlying musical concepts of their respective countries. This is even reflected in the official title of the Italian concerto, which is Concerto after the Italian taste. The Italian concerto reflects the concerti of Vivaldi, for example, in having a fast, slow, fast structure, where the outer movements are in ritonello form. Bach calls for the use of a double manual harpsichord, as the soft manual is used to represent the contrapunto group of instruments, whichever those may be, and the forte manual represents the ripieno, in other words, the orchestral ritonello. This reflects the original thesis of the concerto form, which is the contrast between groups small and big, respectively, which dates back to the creator of the concerto, Arcangelo Corelli, as set out by his famous Opus 6 Concerti Grossi, based entirely around this contrast. Bach develops this contrasting use of the manuals in the third movement, as the player is instructed to switch between the manuals very quickly, very often having one hand on either manual, indicating a double concerto texture with imitative soloist parts. The second movement, however, indicates a single soloist. A solo cantalena line weaves its way above a periodic continuo and string antiphonal accompaniment pattern, and where the soloist line is highly decorated and encompasses a broad tessitura. This texture is reflective of a slow movement from say, the Marcello D minor oboe concerto, a work with which Bach was evidently familiar as he himself arranged the work for solo keyboard as he did with selected Vivaldi concerti. Bach foregoes the ritonello form of the outer movements in the andante movement, instead using a symmetrical two-part structure like many slow movements from Italian concerti not least the middle movement of Vivaldi's Spring Concerto, 